Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to the Third Infantry Division Realism Gaming Podcast. Um, welcome. I mean, we're we're here starting our fourth quarter uh, podcast. Uh, myself, Major the Flash. Uh, we have a, a quite the lineup for you this quarter. Um, and go ahead, gentlemen, introduce yourselves. Amity Dark Face Soldiers. I'm Sergeant Smirsky, Fire Team Leader of First Squad Scorpions and NCOAC of Public Affairs Office. Also, the co-host of this podcast. Hello, everyone. I'm First Sergeant Garcia, Alpha Company War Eagles First Sergeant, and so I see of S3 Fig and also S2 of Intelligence. How's it going, everyone? Corporal Sterling here, Fire Team Leader for Four Squad Phoenix First Platoon. Hell yeah! Welcome, gentlemen. Um, wow, can't believe um, you know we, we're, we're recording our fourth quarter, of course, but. We're uh, we're in 2024. Um, hard to believe their unit's gonna gonna be 21 years old in 2024 here. So um, we have some pretty big changes to talk about that we've gone through in the last three months: uh, October, November, and December of 23. Um, the the big one, uh, you might hear them. Um, I uh, we had some big billet changes, including myself um, moving up into what we call battalion level. Even though that we're not, um, you know, multiple companies big, um, we moved myself up to battalion level after command staff and I talked. Um, I uh, I spawned uh, some future soldiers. Um, we, uh, me and my wife, we had our twin boys um, in in October, uh, middle of October, and. Um, they came a little early, weren't planned yet until December. Uh, so we spent some time in the NICUs and, and hospitals. Um, so it was just fitting that I kind of, you know, instead of step away from the unit as, you know, I'm, I'm told people don't want that. I'm shocked, but you know, people don't want that. Um, but ideally uh, the, the, the assessment that we kind of took is let's get me up to battalion. Um, and then we made the following changes. Um, we, we brought my XO at the time, uh, Lieutenant Tucci. Um, he took over Alpha Company. Um, with Tucci taking over, I mean, he comes with a wealth of experience and knowledge. Uh, he's been in the unit uh, three and a half years. Uh, he's been in his role um, as XO at the time um, for over a year for sure. Um, oh, yeah, almost a, almost a full year and a couple months. Um, he comes with military background. Um, wealth of knowledge obviously runs a lot of our logistics in our unit into like servers and, and things along those lines. So I uh, felt very comfortable with uh, Tucci stepping up, taking over as War Eagle 6, um, which, you know, for him, he's only the, uh, I believe the fourth, maybe even third War Eagle 6 um, in unit history. Um, I've obviously been in that position for many, many, many many years. Um, but prior to, uh, him, I want to say it was only, uh, Captain Cantu, uh, now Major Cantu retired, uh, that has been in that position. Um, and then Captain White, who I took over for, um, back in, boy, who knows, we won't even go down that line before some of you listening to this podcast or in this unit have even been born. Um, but, uh, so yeah, that, I think I narrowed it down that he's our, our fourth War Eagle six, um, in unit history. Um, out of 21 years, which is insane. It's like the Belichick years, I guess, um, if you if you follow football. Um, <laughs> so with that, uh, we brought Lieutenant Vandal out of 2nd Platoon, um, leading 2nd Platoon uh, Reconnaissance. Um, he came up to be the XO. Um, again, wealth of knowledge there. Um, Lieutenant has um, over three years' experience in the unit already, a military veteran, a military active duty. Uh, so he brings uh, wealth of knowledge. It also frees him up. Um, in that XO slot to focus on S2, uh, which um, Garcia, I think you're going to talk about a little bit with Smariki uh, later on, um, on, on what that looks like and what really Vandal's vision is uh, for that. Um, and then the big one, obviously, um, we had First Sergeant Brock uh, retire um, this last quarter. I believe um, with that, we, we kept his slot open for, I think, a month or so um, after that retirement. And, um, you know, we, we talked about that retirement, I think, last podcast. Um, and, well, we selected our guy. Um, and he's right here in front of us today uh, with uh, First Sergeant Garcia. Um, he spent some time as a Master Sergeant going through First Sergeant School uh, with myself um, and, you know, got got those uh, got that diamond um, in his uh, in his Severons this last ceremony. So um, looking forward to having 
uh, and sitting down and talking with you more, Garcia, uh, for the man behind the rank uh, in a later segment here. Um, so that kind of rounds out your, our company staff that we had. Um, Garcia, you've been with us for, again, three years um, as well. Um, it seems that's that, that's that magic uh, year right now. Um, with that, we obviously had um, a couple billet changes to, to take care of in our platoons. Um, so with the exiting of Vandal, um, Winners, uh, Lieutenant Winners, who uh, was leading 1st Platoon, uh, decided that he wanted to go see Recon. It's kind of a passion of his. Uh, so he jumped down um, and worked um, to make that change into 2nd Platoon. Um, with that, uh, we promoted Staff Sergeant Duck in 2nd Platoon um, to the Platoon Sergeant. He was one of the squad leaders. Um, if you guys don't remember, um, Duck and several of his uh uh, soldiers uh, enlisted with us back last January of 2023. They just all hit, actually hit their one year anniversary with us and got their unit uh, anniversary gifts shipped to them uh, this last uh, this last January here, um, or in January here. Um, so it's it's great to be able to promote him within that element. Um, so now second platoons rounded out leadership is uh, Lieutenant Winters and Staff Sergeant Duck. Um, that opened some availabilities for first platoon. Like I said, there's a lot of changes that happened. Um, and we kind of, we, we looked through and said, you know, um, we, we usually select our officers through our NCO Corps. And, and really, you know, and it's open up to E5 and higher uh, to be selected as, as OCS. And, um, well, we had the platoon sergeant at the time, Sergeant First Class Babble, say, I could be an officer. Um, so he kind of had top priority. And uh, he's currently actually in OCS, uh, going through the OCS process. Um, and he's uh, in that billet of uh, uh, platoon leader. Um, with that, Babel has been in our unit um, for two years, two and a half, or two and a quarter, um, and has been doing outstanding. Um, we've had him last quarter uh, as man behind the rank. Um, now you might hear my esteemed guests behind me here, <laughs> um, my twins, but um, you might hear them throughout the entire podcast. Just just throwing that out there. So you guys can take a tally of how many times you hear them. Um, but Bell, uh, in my opinion, one of the most dedicated soldiers in our unit, um, just on the side of he lives in the Philippines. He's a 12 hour difference from anything we ever do. Uh, so if we game at 3 p.m. at Eastern um, in the afternoon, it's 3 a.m. his time. And he's getting up and doing that stuff. So um, very proud of the career he's had so far. And uh, it's been great going through OCS with him, um, which then that led us to promote one of our squad leaders out of first platoon um, up into that platoon sergeant slot. Um, the selection uh, came down to staff sergeant or uh, came down to uh, cadet Babel selecting between um, a couple staff sergeants that, that they had. Um, and Staff Sergeant Marsh was selected as the platoon sergeant. Marsh has been with us for over three years. Um, he's a combat medic in real life. Um, so he serves in the U.S. military. Um, so that's kind of a, a great fitting to, to bring a veteran into a position uh, like that. That has uh, He's an NCO in the real military as well. So it really just brings all of what Marsh can do in real life and really helps our unit at the, at the long run. Um, but... Ultimately, I mean, we had a lot of changes just in that platoon right there, and that was the major uh, billet changes uh, that we had. We obviously had some backfill. Uh, Staff Sergeant Marsh was leading 2nd Squad Ghosts. Uh, there, Austin Bird, uh, Corporal Bird, uh, was selected. Um, and, you know, he's been in the unit just under two years. Um, uh, Ranger qualified, outstanding soldier. Um, and then we also have an announcement within our um, flight team, our third cap. Um uh, Loftus was promoted into our flight leader position uh, with the exodus of Nikus, uh, who retired this last month. Um, so a lot of changes, a lot of changes, but it, it's amazing to be able to have the personnel that we need to go through all that. But um, yeah, what do you guys think on some of these changes? Honestly, I'm really interested to see, see OCS uh, Babel's career. He's a great dude, and from what I've heard, he even not just 12 hours uh, away from everybody else, as you said yourself, but he changed his entire work schedule to fit around the unit. So he now works and does stuff at night, during during the night, and sleeps during the day, just so he can play with us. 
that kind of dedication well only a few people in this unit have them one of them is our battalion commander but it's just <laughs> amazing of course the changes like uh staff sergeant marsh going to the first platoon sergeants gonna be of course also interesting since we're gonna have uh for uh 11 bravo well for an infantry platoon we're gonna have person who has a lot of experience from who's also a real life veteran who's been in combat he knows how platoon operates how the tactics goes goes and so on and so forth so i see both babel and mars just a positive turn for the first platoon yeah absolutely i, I mean all, all the changes we had um it's nice and always nice to see uh people go up uh you know they, they dedicate their time so much uh you mentioned gentlemen a few examples here babel of course um uh major uh, Lieutenant Tucci, Lieutenant Vando, myself, all the platoon sergeants, platoon leaders that, you know, became, uh, you know, that got promoted from their previous bill. It's always nice to see the changes and it's always nice to work because we now have to work with new people and it's a different leadership and uh, we are kind of, you know, getting used to each other um, uh, because for, for many years we had Major as the company commander and now we have uh, Lieutenant Tucci, but everything is going well uh, and uh, it's always nice to see, you know, people moving around and having this, uh, um, you know, just people getting recognized for their, for their work. Yeah, I really couldn't agree more with all of you. The, uh, the promotions we've had this past quarter are definitely some major ones and really people getting the recognition they deserve. I mean, Corporal Bird taking over an entire squad as a corporal that really kind of shows how dedicated he is, how much he's willing to you know, put towards the unit, even as just that entry level, you know, NCO position, it's really something to uh, kind of inspire the lower enlisted, in my opinion. Yeah, you make a you make a solid point, Starling, on on Bird being selected. Um, you know, and that's that's huge, right? He's a he's a corporal, and that's a position that obviously we can recruit by. Um, and one of the one of the talks that I know I've had with like Lieutenant Tucci and, and, and company and, and Garcia was a part of that as well is selecting the best person for the position, right? It does not matter if, you know, obviously birds of corporal, we have several sergeants that are fire team leaders, um, you know, and it, it's making sure that we have the, the best fit for that squad. Now, you know, it doesn't mean that, you know, a certain Smariki, you're a fire team leader as well right now. It doesn't mean that you wouldn't be the, the you know, capable, right? Um, it's all about, What's that squad? In that case, they they felt it's very important to promote within and and bring a fire team leader up within that squad versus bringing an external plant and throwing them in there as SL. Um, so it's it's great to see that growth with within, much like all we just talked about with all these other positions. Every one of these guys started um, as a private uh, of some sort, um, in the exception of Sergeant Duck, Staff Sergeant Duck. He enlisted with us as a corporal. That was due to a merger. Um, but, um, and he's learned that that's not easy <laughs> because there's a lot of waiting. Um, you know, he, he had, uh, a long time to wait to get that platoon sergeant slot, um, almost a full year. In fact, a full year, um, even though that he didn't have a platoon sergeant above him, but the developments there, the, the, how the unit operates has to be there. Um, and since to get in that role, he's been doing outstanding there. Um, and we're really being that solid number two for, for Lieutenant winners. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with the, the role so far. Um, being up in battalion, uh, you know, it, it feels a little weird. I, I you know, I, have to, I delegate a lot more. Like people come to me and I'm like, well, that's that's Lieutenant Tucci's company now, you know, and like, go ask him. <laughs> um, so and it's making sure that, you know, it's it's still obviously a, that soft spot, but it freed me up to not only deal with my situation that I that I had with my, my twin boys uh, in the hospital uh, for three months here. Uh, we're home now, which is awesome. Um, but it also allowed me uh, some free time, um, which I'll talk about later, about, you know, potentially uh, bringing on another game. But uh, we'll we'll save that. So keep listening. We'll talk about that other game down, down the line. So now um, I'm going to turn it over to Sergeant Smirky here. Um, let's talk about some S shops in our DMOS. I mean, we had a big quarter, um, and we, we I hope you talk about 
everything that we did, but um, we we had a great 2023 um, in all our S shops. So why don't you tell us about that? So uh, as Major already said, we've just turned to your 2024. So we have a couple of statistics for DMOSs. Well, S1 recruiting and retention throughout the year of 2023 had a total of 337 total applications, out of which were 229 accepted. Well, 108 of them were dropped or denied. Kind of a shame, though, since that would have been 108 more new recruits and people who would who would have had the chance to become the next OCS Babu or the next first Sergeant Garcia. Well, S2 Intel uh, has also released their statistics. They, comp- they had 34 total missions and patrols for Operations Crimson Sand and 14 training exercises for exercise Shattered Rock in the beginning FTX phase of the year. S3 FIG had a total of 46 one-station unit training classes, out of which 108 trainees graduated, with only 12 trainees out of them receiving their honor graduation and rank of private first class. We also had five airborne schools, three air assault schools, four 68 whiskey combat medic schools, five combat lifesaver courses, six land navigation courses, two ranger schools. For the first time in a year, we had two ranger schools instead of one and 12 more additional courses for a total of 37 training schools hosted throughout the year. As for base maintenance operations, our lovely BMO had 421 maintenance requests. CID, our amazing Photoshop artists, had 553 uniform updates. 123 uniform creation requests and 17 media requests for a total of 693 image requests received through 2023. Corps of Engineering, uh, apparently easy job. They had 10 total mod updates throughout the year of 2023. Of course, most of those being updates to change a map. Of course, there's included into that the change of mods for the our own very own personal ranger school. And finally, Essex Public and Affairs Office. We had a total of 118 news articles posted and total of 196 videos by my beloved video editors and video recorders and broadcast combat journalists. But that's the statistics out of the way. Some couple change some couple stuff happened also as well. Well S1 recruitment and retention, if we go back again from the first demos, we had a December competition throughout the year for holiday exodus. Uh it was a competition about who would do the most NS do the most work being scored on his NSOs on the amount of people he would recruit, invite or recruit to the unit and just see how active they were. Now, the winner of that competition was in the end me with overwhelming 10 NSOs. Overachiever. Eh, I'm trying to save the unit major. It would be <laughs> better if I had, you know, a bit more things. But <laughs> RO is planning to host a couple more of these competitions with monetary awards or, or rewards or awards. Depends what you want from Major La Flash. What about you, Major? Can you tell us anything more about that? Ideally, no, it's um, as is. I mean, we'll, we'll hopefully have a couple more of those competitions. If, if you're looking to be a part of it, and you're not a part of RRO already. RROs are, are obviously very important DMOS to our unit, as long as all of them. But 
in my opinion, RRO, if we don't have people coming in, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to have any FIG stuff or BMO stuff or PAO stuff. So stay tuned. SC Intelligence are dear beloved Game Masters and Zeus, who you sometimes really don't like because he sneaks up upon you. Well, they are planning our next operation after our FTX phase ends. Well, we are going to Finland, gentlemen. We are gonna be... Well, I'm gonna leave that to First Sergeant Garcia to tell you about where, why we're going there and what we're gonna be doing there. So, First Sergeant, if you could tell us something a little bit more. Of course. Um, so, gentlemen, yes, we are going to Finland for this uh, year's operation. Um, we actually conducted a unit, uh, actually a squad leader plus vote, um, where we decided uh, which route we could go for uh we planned uh three options or i think three or four options to present to our uh, squad leaders and higher and everyone decided to go for the alternate reality option so that means we are going to use the history the here real life history of events but we are going to create a new storyline a new alternate reality with events that didn't happen in real life and with that uh uh, the squad leaders and higher, they chose to go a little bit different because in the past years we were uh, taking turns between going to deserts uh, and to the Middle East and uh, Eastern Europe. But now they actually wanted to go north and see a little bit of snow. Uh, so yes, we are going to Finland, um, a little bit of... Uh, of maybe background this is going to be announced more in the future with the video that we are planning to to send a pao is planning to send right uh for your the, the public and the unit members to see in this video you're going to be able to uh, understand and know exactly what is going on uh in that operation or a little bit of a background for the operation and what the steps are until we actually deploy so i'm going to save this information for the video um, but yeah, I mean, S2 is, uh, in, you know, full speed. We are actually currently working in planning the whole operation ahead of us. We don't only want to prepare the story, but we also want to prepare each mission ahead of time. So when that mission comes, right, we just, uh, see what happened in the last mission and kind of adapt what happened there, but the plan itself is already there. So we are having a lot of work because of that, but I think it will pay off in the end, um, just having everything planned ahead of time is basically the best thing ever. Um, Lieutenant Vandal, he joined us in S2 in October. And since then, we he implemented a lot of changes. Uh, and with our help, the Zeus's, uh, we are making things very uh, different from the last operation. Especially when it comes to like the planning, like I said, we are creating the order of battles. This is something new that we didn't have previously. So basically the order of battle, uh, are, most of you unit members already remember uh, what are the order of the battles are. It's basically the unit breakdown. So for example, we have a brigade and this brigade have five, five, six battalions and these battalions have three companies each, right? So that's the order of battle. You are, you are able to see what each unit has. So this company has uh, six um, AAs. This this other company have six times or nine times infantry platoons. So you actually are able to know which e unit have. And also when you actually fight them uh, and the enemy loses those vehicles, we actually uh, cut that off from the order of battle. So the enemies now have a limited amount of vehicles that it can use, which makes things more realistic, and our unit members are more informed about this. We are also very open to feedback. Everyone, you know, we have a element feedback in our Discord where people can send their feedbacks to us, especially the element leaders. They talk with their soldiers, and they bring up to us the feedbacks they want to see. So... We have a very bright future for S2 and uh, for this next operation. I think everyone will like it. And like I said, stay tuned for more information about this in a special video that will be coming out in the next few months. All right. So, well, for the next DMOS, S3 Force Improvement Group, 
well, of course, our favorite drill sergeants and drill instructors, they're planning to redo all of the schools. A lot of you have possibly complained about them. Well, the leadership has heard you all and they agree with you. So, for example, the schools will be now much harder. There's going to be addition of written exams like you have during an OSIT where you have to pass a certain exam. Or if some of you still remember uh, best squad competition, just like that. But it will be all centered around that the person passing needs to actually prove that what he's learning, he knows it. Not just to be there and he, because of being there, he gets the badge or the qualification. So, first Sergeant Garcia, I'm turning to you once again. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about this as well? Thank you, sir. Yes. Um, for the S3 operations, uh, as soon as uh, Lieutenant Vando took over OIC uh, in December, November, we started planning himself with uh, the NCOIC at the time, Babo and myself as a senior drill sergeant, we, we started to plan the, the course's rework. Uh, basically, every single course that we have in FIG at the moment was going to be reworked. Uh, some of them first with some priority and others last, but all of them would, right? Um, and this plan, it stays. Now that we have a change of OCS Babo moving to platoon leader and going for OIC and myself getting into OIC, we're going to continue this plan made by Lieutenant Vando uh, to rework the courses. And like the Sergeant Smirinsky said, uh, we plan to make sure the courses are more difficult. Uh, we, we want to have a difference between our courses and schools. So our courses, they will be more basic, um, you know, when it comes to instruction, they're be, going to be, become our ba basic. You're still going to be able to fail the courses, but it's going to be more much harder to fail a course. It's, it's basically, let's say uh, here, it's a CLS course, Combalite Saver course. It's still going to be have a lot of information there, especially if our CAT medical that we're currently testing gets approved. It's still going to be a lot more information than we currently have at our CLS course, but it's not going to be as much information as the Six State Whiskey School because schools, we want to make sure they are much more bigger and have a lot more information there. And also, they will have a lot of no-go parameters. So the chances of a soldier failing a school is much greater than uh, failing a course. And also, we want, uh, like uh, the sergeant said, have written exams, uh, individual written exams. So make sure our approach to uh, teaching uh, our students, our trainees, are more focused in an individual level instead of a group level. Of course, there are courses that you know prioritizes group work, and we don't want to abandon that because then the camaraderie goes, you know, to space. We we don't have camaraderie anymore if everything becomes individual. But of course, a few courses, such as, for example, our Pathfinder, they will have a lot of individual training phases where the student will have to show that they really know what's going on um, instead of having one person carrying the whole group, right? So we want to get rid of that. So stay tuned for our next podcast. We're going to be announcing which course is being reworked. Uh, we plan to do this one course at a time and have like five, six cadre working at it uh, instead of having two cadre working at all the courses at the same time. I think it's best for us to focus on only one course. So yeah, make sure to you know, pay attention to our podcast or our unit uh, forums, and uh, we will be come back. I will be coming back, uh, or Major and Sergeant Smirik will be coming back here to announce the changes we will be, we will be conducting during the year. Well, that's that. So thank you for a Sergeant. Now, on to the next demos. Well, CID is planning, well, the OIC of CID is working on a project. Some of you may have heard. It's called Winners' CID Killer. I've seen it personally, what it can do, and it's going to overhaul the work of CID. You won't have to wait for months and for your CID request to be finished because most of that process of when where the award will be put on the soldier's uniform and well basically the entire work with the CID core 
will be automatized by this program that uh, second lieutenant winners is working on basically it's gonna make cid much less smaller with less pe less people having to be inside of it but still allow them to accomplish much more requests than they do now and much much faster another s4 shop corps of engineering well uh, apparently we're gonna have a website revision major Lafarge, could you tell us a little bit more about that yeah so um obviously uh, currently right now our our website is based on envision envision has um its own limitations and it's actually you know um, with our first comp setting uh that we have right now which is technically version two um there is a third version of purse comps uh, dot called persecoms.io um and there's a lot of work that has to be done uh but uh core of engineers myself um along with our former um uh, he's a retired captain uh captain drake um we're working with him uh along with some other retirees um, and, and staff, I should say, uh, to work on a new website for us. Um, obviously, our website's pretty state-of-the-art. We get a lot of compliments. Um, it looks, you know, works and operates exactly as we need. Um, people like Drake were, were huge in, um, you know, upgrading our website from where we were. Uh, our website officially, this one that we have now, was, I believe, built by Captain Cantu, Major Cantu. Uh, back in like 2017, 2016. Um, and, you know, so we have a lot of, you know, upgrades that we can go for. Uh, we've kind of patched it and, and but now it's kind of just, let's get to a, a, a new uh, uh, website, just complete rebuild. Uh, so we got, we still got some months, but, um, you know, hopefully in 2024 here, we'll see a new website. Hopefully I can give a little bit more of a, a a detail upgrade on um, uh, timeline and exactness um, on our quarter one uh, podcast of 2024 and, and kind of just keep it going. All right. So thank you for that explanation, Major. Well, website revision is not the only thing that Corps of Engineers are planning to do or have been doing. As some of you may have noticed, uh, during the last days of Operation Crimson Sand, the servers were really unstable. So, during the holiday break, during holiday exodus, the Corps of Engineering have been very busy trying to figure out the problem with the servers. They've tried removing mods, uh, tried redoing server settings and just playtesting them with other people playing anti-stasi. Well, that was for naught because they have found the issue and it was actually the problem with headless clients and they have been uh, right now working on seeing how much the need headless clients is needed. But Major, do you have any more information about that? So ideally, it's, it's you know, there's there's no exact, this is the problem with our servers. Um, we host through AWS, which is Amazon Web Service. Um, so our, our servers are cloud-based, um, which allows us the ability that if we have 10 people, it runs great. If we have 50 people, we're able to server automatically bumps up in power. If we have 100 people, it bumps up in power automatically. Um, so it's not necessarily server stuff. It, it's, it's a setting. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, Lieutenant Tucci, uh, Lieutenant Cooper, um, and our, our Corps of Engineers staff um, have been working tirelessly trying to figure out, you know, is it a mod that's throwing errors that's causing it the crash? As you said, Sergeant, we pulled some mods over the holiday exodus. Um, you know, uh, Lieutenant Cooper uh, was... was uh, the first one to take the gut punch because we pulled all his aircraft uh, that they utilized in uh, in the mod pack um, that are extra, you know, the advanced A64 and all that, um, only to have the server crash within 20 minutes anyway. So we put that stuff back. Um, so right now, it's we're not sure if it's a headless client issue yet. Um, however, that's the current version that we're what, what we're working on. So hopefully. Um, 
we can continue to test and as we go through this FTX phase, um, be able to button up our servers, hopefully by the by the start of our um, either company um, FTX stuff or 100% hopefully by our operations so we have smooth smooth running from there. Well, thank you for explaining it, Major. I hope that clears up a lot of misunderstanding between the people in the unit. And hopefully the proper reason and everything else gets solved, solved as soon as possible. Well, on to the last DMOS. Public Affairs Office is, of course, working already on the operational trailer. We are kind of early with this, but I would like to make a public announcement that we are seeking voice actors for the Operation Trailer. We prefer people of European descent uh, who have any native language, so Germans, Polish, Czech, Finnish, or anything else is preferred, especially if you can speak at well and with a proper accent. Now, I believe that's everything for DMOSs, unless any of you gentlemen have anything you would like to chime in. So, Major, back to you. All right. So you're saying my accent for Russian isn't good enough? I mean... Uh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. I, We're gonna I, under work I understand, that, comrade. Too. See, I can't do that. So I'm not a very good voice actor. So, yes, if, uh, if people are available... Worry, Please, please come help us. Um, I mean, uh, if, if you haven't already, Public Affairs uh, put out an amazing video. Um, in my opinion, one of our top videos of 2023 um, for Operation Crimson Sand. Um, and it was uh, pretty, pretty awesome. I think the one before that as well uh, for Blue Giant was, was pretty amazing as well. So um, that's something that our, our staff does amazing with and kind of just gives a little bit of a a teaser of where we're going and what we're doing. And um, as uh, First Sergeant Garcia said already, I mean, the video will help hopefully explain a good chunk of um, why we're going where we're going and, and what we're doing. So looking forward to those releases. So stay tuned. Um, <laughs> next up, I'd like to talk about more kind of unit news. Um, you know, we, uh, we had a big quarter, uh, quarter four. Um, uh, you know, technically this is... Uh, quarter one info, uh, but I found it viable so that it's closer to the actual time. Uh, we had Sergeant Anderson. Uh, those that don't know, Sergeant Anderson is our Medal of Honor recipient. Uh, we had his four-year anniversary um, of his death um, in, you know, and, and to celebrate him, uh, to have a memorial post. If you haven't already, um, you know, Chief uh, Warrant Officer Kelso uh, put together an amazing article uh, about him and, and, you know, why we honor him his time in the unit, his time in his personal life. Um, and, you know, it's, it's something that we always try to honor um, in early January um, is, is Sergeant Anderson's uh, memorial uh, with us. So um, if you haven't already, check that out. We'll link it below as well. Um, but on to, I guess, happier news, um, Ranger School. Um, you mentioned S3 had two Ranger Schools um, in uh, 2023. Uh, one is always with the 173rd. They're a sister unit of ours. So if you haven't checked them out already, please go do. If you can't make our times, go check their times out. Um, they're a good sister unit of ours. We do a lot of uh, back and forth training um, and they come attend our events. We attend their stuff. Uh, so a great unit. So shout out to the 173rd. I've uh, been doing it a long time. Um, just with same with us. Um, so but we decided uh, that we were going to do our own ranger school as well. We invited them um, and, you know, we, we hopefully are able to uh, continue this going forward. It, it is the goal uh, to run it in December of every year. Uh, the 173rd runs theirs usually in June, July timeframe, and we'll run ours in December timeframe. Um, the only the big difference between the two is usually the 173rd's ranger school um, is around that 12 to 14 hours. Um, ours is a full 24 hours. Um, and amazingly, we had 11 graduates um, go through for first time grads, I should say. Um, so with that, we had specialist R winners, lady winners. Uh, we had Zvik, uh, Soup, uh, Fitzgerald, uh, Borvitsky, Alter, uh, Siegel, Schacht, um, Clayton, and Marsh 
um, all as first time graduates. So their first experience in ranger school uh, was the full 24 hours. Um, crazy, just absolutely crazy. Uh, with that, we also had um, both birds, uh, P bird and A bird. Um, go through the course and Staff Sergeant Ivanov go through the course. Um, they were already qualified um, as rangers uh, from the, uh, a prior ranger school, uh, but they found it fitting that they go through again, <laughs> double double it up, I guess, um, which is insane. Um, and a big shout out to the cadre. Um, we had uh, winners and vandals, lieutenant winners, lieutenant vandals, uh, that uh, were the driving force of getting the course going. Uh, it was kind of, at first, I believe we called it Winner's 24 Hours of Pain. Um, it was one of his things. They brought it to me asking, you know, would this qualify as a school? And, uh, I, you know, we kind of tweaked a couple things and talked a few things. Um, and then we decided, yeah, this is this is beneficial to be a ranger school because of the longevity of it and, uh, and the experience within it. Um, so then they got a couple of the staff sergeants, Ayers and Marsh involved uh, to, to help be cadre. Um, and they ran the course. Um, it was, uh, it was great to, I was able to jump in, uh, for a short while, um, and, and, you know, give the, give the troops, I think a morale boost about that 14 hour mark, I want to say, um, which I, I give them credit. It's, it's insane. I, I would highly encourage those that want to be ranger school, um, to, to do both. But if you want the true experience of what it's like to have physical fatigue, I mean, there was a warning label on the sign up saying this will cause fatigue. This will cause some uh, mental stress. This will cause, you know, some potential health issues. And you're basically wavering those uh, to sign up. <laughs> that, you know, you can't come back after us. Um, but um, we ended up, we out of it all, we only had one drop. Um, and we had a couple connection issue stuff, but um, ultimately the servers held out well and um, it was pretty, pretty amazing to, to honor those soldiers this last ceremony, uh, for, for being honored or for being graduates of the first 24 hour course. Uh, we got a lot of good PR off of it as well through our social medias. Um, uh, Arma platforms interacted with us. We had a couple of the units say that's insane. Um, you know, saying I would never do that, stuff like that, but Hey, that's, that's what Milsim is. Um, no major, I have a question, uh, in regards to the Ranger school, do we, Gonna have uh, people from other units attending as well, like the one seventy or one seventy third of us. Are yes. we gonna invite them? Are we gonna invite Fourth Infantry Division, or possibly, since it's basically its own uh, uh, Ranger School and a really special one compared to how other units do it, also invite the seventy fifth Ranger Battalion. Yeah, I mean, uh, that is our goal here for 2024, um, is to get out in front of it um, and, you know, uh, see other units that want to participate in it. Um, in fact, I just got the announcement and information. I passed it on to uh, First on Garcia. Uh, first, we're going to focus on getting cadre um, and then signups for the Ranger School here in July uh, with the 173rd. Um, and then from there, we will... Um, once we're done with that one, kind of turn and focus and say, all right, well, you, if you miss that one, here's the next opportunity and, uh, get that out there to our, uh, our unit liaisons, um, and, you know, talk to, talk to them, see who wants to attend and, um, hopefully be able to have some of these 11 graduates, uh, go through it again as cadre, um, and support potentially an increased number of, uh, of ranger candidates. So, um, want to quickly touch on um bohemia which is the owner and um you know they they are you know the people that have arma 3 right they're um the, the parent company uh released a uh 2023 by the numbers uh for arma and i thought it was pretty cool to cover these well obviously our um, our main game here is arma 3 has been for years uh but 2023 um in the numbers not only in 2023 did arma uh, celebrate their 10 year anniversary. We talked about that last podcast. Uh, but in 2023, uh, they had 2.1 million uh, unique active users, which means that's 2.1 million people launched the game. In total, we had 61 million hours played. 61 million. That is insane. Um, with, I mean, they, they got a, a large amount of numbers. Um, they peaked at 26,000. Uh, um, uh, I guess players um, in April of 2023, 
um, took in over 20,000 reviews on Steam for the game. Um, you know, in in total, they sold 2.8, almost 2.9. Uh, hey, you hear him? Uh, 2.9 uh, million copies of Arma in 2023. There we go. I had to pick my boy up. Um, so just insane to see those numbers roll out of a 10-year-old game. Um, so being able to do that is, was insane. Um, hopefully, 2024, um, you know, that that's just for Arma 3. That doesn't even include the numbers uh, for the startup and, and as Forger gets going and what's that look like. Um, but hopefully we can continue to see these types of stats uh, with an Arma. Um, because that gives us a lot of hope. Definitely that 2.9 million copies sold, right? Um, being able to, you know, uh, that's that's franchise, right? So um, being able to see 61 million hours played, um, you know, 2.1 million active users, that's give us 0.0001% of those active users in our unit, and we have thousands of people, right? <laughs> so um, people say the arm is dead, anything like that. I, I, countered that with these stats for one, um, 61 million hours, uh, almost $61.1 million. Um, and being able to say, I mean, it's, it's a niche, right? There's, there's a lot of special things that you can do in Arma. There's the Milsim side, there's, um, just King of the Hill, there's Anastasi, there's all these different game modes, there's different DLCs, of course. So, you know, not all of them are unique, like Milsim, like what we do, uh, players and don't want that, but um, it's pretty amazing to see those types of stats. Uh, with else, yeah, um, as I mentioned, we, what's that? Everything good there with the boys? Yep, yep. I just uh, had to set one down. Um, so as I mentioned, they already did their 10-year anniversary. One unique thing that happened in quarter four um, was the New Year's Day incentive, right? Um, they put out a Czech Veterans Pack. Um, which, you know, on November 1st, they, they announced this. Um, they wanted a kind of uh, some screenshots involving um, this certain mod pack and the army of the Czech Republic, um, right up your alley, Smariki. Um, but ultimately, we got contacted to, to participate, um, and we submitted several screenshots. Um, Sergeant Nicholas uh, took lead on that as in CID, um, and actually... Um, our screenshots were used in the main collage that was released um, on November 11th, so Veterans Day, uh, under the hashtag Players for Veterans. Um, and, you know, it was pretty pretty cool to see our screenshot. Uh, there has our third ID logo in the background. Um, just good PR there. Um, and that's stuff that we love to get involved in and, and do as well. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, um, not too much big news, a couple of DLC updates, um, but... Ultimately, I mean, there's just a lot of a lot of things still going on in Arma, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing it progress. Hopefully, some 2024 news of Arma 4. I'm not saying it's happening, but it'd be cool to see some news on it. Um, other than that, um, so uh, a little while ago, I mentioned um, you know a, a potential game uh, coming to us. Uh, something that I've been working on uh, as an, an battalion level um, is um, bringing on uh, another game. Uh, a couple podcasts ago, I mentioned Direct Contact. A um, couple, you know, talking about like what's that look like. That was delayed um, launch for Alpha. Um, it was supposed to be here in December, um, but now it sounds like it's going to be more closer to quarter, end of quarter two, quarter three time frame. Um, so with that, um, talking with a former retired uh, company commander of ours, uh, Captain Strickland. Um, who is looking to get out of retirement. He's sick of the jello um, and the knitting Saturdays. But um, so him uh, and quite a few other retirees, um, we have a former Lieutenant uh, Beauville, um, uh, a former Sergeant First Class uh, Lungsford, um, quite a few astute other E5s and E6s um, that, you know, are, are uh, potentially coming out of retirement. This is still early stages. We're looking to still, uh, you know, build out the foundation, uh, but we're going to, um, I think it's safe to say, we're going to take a big swing as squad again. Uh, we did support squad when it first came out uh, back in the, boy, 2017 time frame, 16 time frame, uh, maybe a little later. Um, and it, it had a lot of uh, good parts to 
uh, the game for us to support, but not all the way there. But now over the years, it has developed into a game that we're able to take and run with. Um, so, you know, we're, we're not sure on the time frame of when we'll officially pick it up. There's still a lot of back end work to do, um, including like the, the structure, um, the elements that's going to be coming on um, and things like that. So um, stay tuned. But um, if you're into squad, please start playing it. I mean, hopefully um, it won't be the, the, the main thing that I'm looking to make sure is that it's not the same times. Uh, that armor rolls around, right? Uh, so that if you want to play, if these squad people want to play armor, they can play. If uh, armor people want to play squad and participate in a uh, FTX or a squad drill, by all means they can. So that's that's kind of the whole thing. Now, Major, before we go to the next topic, <clears throat> I know this is our section, but I have an interesting unit need to add to this. Absolutely. Well, Scorpion Squad has been busy throughout the entire operation. We've actually made a spreadsheet that I'm gonna release soon to the public when this podcast is out, where we cataloged all the enemies killed by our own squad, all the civilians killed, our average squad member count, and the amount of vehicles and helicopters lost by our entire company. Now, from a couple of stuff, we've lost for Operation Crimson Sand 25 strikers, four Bradleys, three Humvees from 2nd Platoon, eight Apache helicopters, four Chinooks, and four Blackhawks. All of these losses total of one billion dollar in taxpayer money lost during a conflict <laughs> and during deployment. I want to point out those Apache pilots survived. <laughs> I didn't count that, but it's interesting. Scorpions are planning to do the same thing for the next operation. So, for sergeant, we'll see how really truthful it is that we're gonna be counting our own enemies <laughs> but hopefully <laughs> the statistics next operation will be much better i would be much happier and i think everybody else if we had less destroyed vehicles there and certainly didn't waste as much taxpayer money And a little bit final tip, uh, cherry on top part of this. Uh, Sergeant Smeritsky, uh, known fire team leader who's prone to getting into serious injuries during operations, has uh, got into approximately forty-three thousand dollars in me medical costs. <laughs> We know, we know we got to move on when, when he's talking in the movement. third person. <laughs> so you, you didn't say how many total enemies did uh, Scorpions take down? It was 1,474. Wow. I know I, uh, I participated to some of that. And half. Outstanding. All right. Um, so next up here, we're going to jump into um, the Soldier of the Quarter. Uh, so I'll kind of tee it up a little bit here. Um, Smirky is going to take lead on kind of the, the questions and, and, um, but we got our, our very own Corporal Jake, uh, Starling, uh, with us. Um, but, uh, so he was named our quarter four to round out our, uh, 2023, uh, year as our quarter four soldier of the quarter. Um, you know, Starling, you enlisted in November of 2022. So just hit the, just started the full year of 2023. You served through the entire thing. Um, you know, you, you, you had a small stint in, in, uh, combat aviation and, uh, and really, I mean, outstanding job. Um, I'll let, uh, Sergeant Smirky kind of go through and, and talk a little bit more about you and, um, looking to, looking forward to hearing your interview. So Corporal Starling, a soldier that's in, well, a negative to the Forest Squad Phoenix and one of their current fire team leaders. He has joined the unit on November 28th, 2022. And 
of course, joined his amazing Phoenix. During a certain time in his service with us, he had a phase, just like anybody else has, when he joined as Army Aviator of the 3rd Combat Aviation Brigade in June. But he quickly came bored of it, and, he, and in October, joined back his favorite squad. Could have joined the first squad, I wouldn't argue about that, would have been much better. But Corporal Starling has, has been a squad medic, fire team member, fire team leader, and much, much more. So, Corporal Starling, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, yeah, thank you for that amazing introduction. <laughs> um, honestly, I'm, I'm not really good at talking about myself. Uh... I suppose the kind of the main things you've already hit on. I've been playing video games for a long time, done a whole lot of stuff. I enjoy, you know, that type of gunner POV that I did in three cab. Uh, in my personal life, I enjoy viewing re reruns of the Joy of Painting by Bob Ross. Uh, it's just something I really enjoy doing on my off time. I've also got my college certificate in emergency service communication. So that's uh, kind of something that I'm proud of on that front as well. All right. Well, but why don't you like talking about yourself? Come on. You need to be a little bit more narcissistic to, you know, enjoy a little bit talking about yourself. But on if you don't want to, I'm not going to force you. It's not like I'm holding a gun currently to your head. Oh, I don't know. This guy job. next to me would uh, differ. Uh, that's major. Uh, don't ignore him. Okay. <laughs> So, why did you join 3rd Infantry Division, and what keeps you here? You know, a lot of things keep me here, not gonna lie. There, there's a lot in this unit that, there's a lot to explore, there's a lot to uh, be proud of being a part of, really. It's, the 3rd Infantry Division, I, I tell a lot of people this, I tell, you know, my friends outside the unit, which I know, I have friends outside the unit, it's insane. Um... I tell Impossible. them, you know, <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, no, I tell them, you know, the third infantry, it's like a, it's like a family when you get into it enough, like after being here for a year, uh, a lot of people that I know here, you know, we play games outside the unit. We talk on a regular basis. It's, it's more than just, you know, the Saturday, Sunday operation times. Uh, the initial reason why I joined is actually kind of funny. I've been abandoned here. Um, I originally joined up with a friend of mine, uh, Private Jay Holiday, now no longer with the unit. Uh, he abandoned me here about a week after joining, and, uh, you know, I just haven't been able to shake you guys since. And you never will. So, that is if we're your family, who's the mother or the father unit? Would uh, it be Major Lafleche? Would it be Second Lieutenant Tucci? I mean, First Lieutenant. <laughs> You know what? That's a great question. Um, well, Major Little Flash is definitely the uh, authority figure. Um, he certainly runs this house, so definitely the mother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. And then, you know, uh, for the father figure, it's... Uh, oh, God, there's so many. I think that depends on the squad. Really, listen for for me. It'd be staff or sorry, not staff. Sergeant Babble now, OCS Babble. Now he was my first squad lead. He's kind of the one that really showed me the ropes, got me into the things that I'm in now. You know, really encouraged me to take up some more things in the unit, take up more responsibility. He's probably one of the leading factors as to why I'm an FTL now in Phoenix. So yeah, it's I guess it depends on squad when you look at it. Now, you've certainly had the best opportune moment to score some brownie points with the first sergeant, but here you go praising the cadet instead. So, on to the next question. Before the first sergeant decides to punish you, any favorite, funny, memorable, anything, any moment that you just enjoyed in this unit 
Anything comes to mind? Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of things that I've enjoyed about this unit. Uh, I know I put maybe one or two examples in my soldier quarter post there, but one that I didn't go quite in detail with was uh, during Operation Crimson Sand, or I think it might have been one of the situational training exercises. Um, we jumped a striker over a bridge that was out. So we... <laughs> Ah, yes, the favorite STX. <laughs> was that an STX? Yeah. We, yes, that the was the final was... week. <laughs> yep. Bridge was out, so we we jumped the strikers over the bridge that was out. It was beautiful. I'm surprised it worked. Well, if you certainly know our mansion well enough, you could climb walls like a goat. I certainly understand. been in several videos already but some people are unfortunate to do it like major when he tried that he just face planted on the ground so corporal what army value is the most important to you and why you know there, there's a lot of good ones uh the integrity is one that really stands out you know it's one that in my opinion, everyone should have. It's really vital in order to fulfill duties and responsibilities and whatnot. Not just, you know, with the army, but, you know, day-to-day -day basis without integrity, you're you're not really much of... I don't know how to word that. You're not really, you know, integrous. I don't know. But, yeah, it's just integrity stands out to me. I, yeah, I, I, my, my words are failing me right now. Sergeant, Ricky, send help. Um i'm not gonna because okay. if you're failing you're a failure obviously and we do not support failures in this unit well integrity is interesting value honestly not the one i would pick myself but today as i always say it's not about myself so what motivates you to be here why do you strive to get better What's your goal for the, for this unit? Well, you know, I have four privates under my command in Phoenix. And if... Lucky he has I... any privates. I'm jealous. <laughs> and uh, with, with that, if, you know, if I'm not looking for new ways to improve or to kind of relate to them, because, you know, the... With Phoenix here, we are a really, you know, diverse group. I've got uh, two Israelis in the team. I've got an American, my myself, of course, being Canadian, uh, trying to find a way for all of us to, you know, work together, communicate better. You know, sometimes there's a language barrier or two, but we are always looking to kind of move around that. And that really motivates me to show up here every day or not every day, uh, but every weekend. I would show up here every day if I could. Um, every weekend and get everyone, you know, squared away. And I guess it's the privates in the teams that motivate me and watching S1, you know, bring in those new soldiers during NSO. That's really something that motivates me as well. It's always a big motivator for me with the new recruitment. If S1 motivates you, why aren't you there yet? Come on, our doors are open. <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, I'm in... Three D mosses right now. I don't think the major would uh, allow me to take on much more of a workload. Major? <laughs> yeah, we have a three limit, so we'll have to see which one he sucks at the most and kick him out of there, and then uh, okay. get him. You know. uh, you're out of PAO, buddy. Sorry. Oh crap! <laughs> you gotta find a new team lead. I don't need a team lead. I'll run it myself, and then it will fucking burn down. <laughs> so. Any valuable lessons you have learned in this unit? Oh, so many. Well, tell <laughs> us about them. Come on, speak, well, speak. I, 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 uh, <laughs> you know, the having done so many things and prior experiences in Arma, none of them have been as um, in-depth, I suppose you would say, as the third infantry division they you, well they we really you know try and get those uh lessons really put in and get everyone educated and uh grown whenever they you know from between the time they join the unit to 
you know, their first anniversary, there's a lot of opportunities to grow and whatnot. Uh, one of the most valuable lessons I've learned is really, you know, adapting and how do I, how do I word this? Adapting and being part of a larger environment than just, you know, a standard unit. Like it, every unit can say, you know, we have this and that and the other, but the third infantry division really has shown that they are able to teach and uh, just, you know, expand your knowledge on certain topics, which in my opinion, always, you know, finding out that, you know, there's always more to learn on Arma after doing it for so many years. It's, it's really vital to me. I know, you know, maybe not everyone else will see it that way, but I always enjoy, you know, expanding my prior knowledge on things. Oh, that's a boring answer. Okay, what, what's your favorite lesson? Well, friendship. Because friendship is magic. Friendship is magic. Well, Corporal Starling, thank you for your time. Now, that will certainly, at least, hopefully, people learn a little bit more about who you are and why you are here. So, this was Soldier of the Quarter part, and the podium is yours, Major. Outstanding. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Smirky and, and Starling. I, again, congratulations on being named Quarter Four, uh, earning that Soldier's Medal, which is uh, very coveted among uh, many, many soldiers uh, to, to try to get. So hopefully, if you are looking to get your own little shiny medal um, and come on the next podcast, hopefully you're already doing outstanding. We're... Um, we'll be announcing our quarter one of 2024 um, here in our April ceremony. So uh, with that, we have the man behind the rank, and that's why I got our very new shiny first sergeant uh, with us. So welcome, first sergeant. Thank you, Major. So Thank obviously, you. we got to know you a little bit um, during your um, quarter three 2021 podcast appearance uh, where you were uh, the soldier of the quarter. Uh, so obviously, the astute uh, soldier of the quarter um, you know, we, we pick them right. That's for sure. Um, when, when multiple of our soldiers of quarters are, are constantly here. Um, in fact, um, all three of you. So that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, but let's, uh, let's continue on here. Um, the man behind the rank is, is dedicated to, um, a soldier, whether C staff or a senior member of the unit, um, that we like to go through and, and just gain a little bit more personal knowledge about the soldier. And I thought it was fitting to get our new first sergeant up here. Um, as he's our top of our NCO Corps um, and, and is so vital to the success of our unit and running our NCO Corps. Um, like to like to get to know you a little bit. So what for you, First Sergeant, um, what's your favorite aspect of the unit? Definitely uh, major uh, professionalism. Uh, I mean, the 3rd Infantry Division Realism Unit has been around for 20 years. We just made 20 years last year. And that's mostly because of the professionalism of all the unit members present and past. Um, this professionalism reflects on how everything is organized, uh, which then built a solid structure that we have now, and that made sure that we could be active for so long. 20 years is a, is a long time, and we're still going strong. And you know, hopefully for 20 more years, we'll still be around due to this professionalism that uh, our unit members have. Hell yeah, I'm I'm uh, at least gunning for 15 more so that my my twin boys can enlist. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. A couple more private little flashes. Um, so, what's your favorite food? What do you like to What do you like to mow down on? Well, my favorite food is of Brazilian origin, of course. It was uh, to be expected. Um, maybe a few of you probably you know heard about this, uh, but if not, I'll explain it here. Uh, we have here a dish in, in Brazil that is called, uh, it's very simple actually, the famous and simple rice and beans, right? Uh, but it's not only that. You can also have various steaks and uh, other garnishes that can uh, accompany this dish. So you can have rice and beans plus like roasted or fried sausages. sausages. You can also have roasted chick chicken and steak. Uh, added to the rice and beans. Um, we also have uh, the French fries that we can accompany with the steaks. Um, 
Um, and we also have a, a, a dish called farofa that goes along with this, uh, with this main dish. Um, basically, farofa is what we call a toasted cassava. Uh, but is also known as a maize flour mixture. You know, it's made of uh, made of a maize flour mixture. Interesting. You sound like a foodie. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love food too. I love it. Um, so, um, what? When were you born? What's your birthday? I'm currently 25 years old, which means I was born in September 16th, uh, 1998. Nice. Okay. Right before the turn of the century, baby. Any pets? Oh, yeah. I've had a lot of pets. Um, all of them that I uh, lived with were dogs. I never had any cats. My parents, uh, in their childhoods, they'd had cats and rabbits and a lot of other pets, but myself, only dogs. Uh, I had, I, if I remember correctly, I lived with about six dogs throughout my childhood until the end of my teenage years. And when, when I was 18, seven years ago, uh, unfortunately, the last dog we had passed away. And since then, since uh, uh, seven years ago, we haven't adopted any new pets. I think the main reason behind it is, you know, the emotional toll involved. Because, you know, losing a pet that ha has been with you for 15 years is like losing a close family member. And you, when you have been through this for more than six times or even more than more than that it's hard to want to go through it all again you know maybe in the future uh have adopt more paths but for now you know we we stopped a little bit yeah i i understand that actually i'm coming up on the one year anniversary of our our my dog roxy uh funny story there quickly um is i got roxy through a former first sergeant of ours in this unit uh first sergeant long um he deployed um or actually no he was stationed in hawaii got stationed in hawaii from the states here, well, it is a state, but you have to go through a quarantine. I um, mean, you didn't want to have uh, Roxy go through that six month quarantine. Uh, so I drove to Iowa where he was stationed or from um, and picked her up. So and I had her until she was 16 years old. So um, I get the, I get that pet thing. It hurts. But So what do you do for a living? Well, Major, I work for a cleaning slash sanitizing product maker uh, company. Uh, we make, like I said, cleaning products usually for bathrooms. So just to name a few products, we have gel, detergent, and bleach, for example. Uh, in this company, I work what we, what we call here as a literal translation from Portuguese quality as analyst, uh, quality assistance, or quality assurance department. Uh, I basically help the quality manager to maintain the company's final product quality. But not just the final product, but I also ensuring that all the steps of the process of the you know the the, the product making process is uh, good enough. You know, meets the standards. Um, for example, when we uh, buy raw materials or, or we buy supplies for the final product, for example, shipping boxes, even shipping boxes that arrive from our suppliers, I check them um, to see if the barcodes are not are visible or not smudged. Um, also, when it's our own product of ours. I see if they have the right color and smell to it because they're chemical products, right? Sanitizer companies, so they have to have. They need to have the right color, the right smell, the right uh, visual, right? Um, not only that, but I also accumulate a few other uh, roles, such as control the company's day-to-day -day operations, helping the manager. Uh, so I control the customer orders. I prioritize which orders are uh, should be go first, and also. I take care of generating purchase orders when we need more raw materials and basically send them towards the buying sector. Wow. Pretty much what I big do. Big wig. Very big wig. Yeah. Um, so uh, other than gaming, what are some of your hobbies? What do you like to do? Well, Major, I don't think this is considered gaming. Maybe some people will uh, because this is more in the realm of the imagination. You're not actually, you know, play a game on your computer. Uh it's not a game like we know of, needing to like Arma Tree, you know, um, Grand Theft Auto, uh, Elden Ring. Um, have you heard of Dungeons and Dragons? Major? Of course, yeah. Yeah. So basically, it's a tabletop RPG where you gather with two to six other players, sometimes even more if the DM is crazy enough, uh, to play an adventure together. So you have the game master. We call the GM, who narrates the adventure and the players uh, interact with the GM and their NPCs. So it's basically a role play. Uh, the same thing we do here in Arma, we can consider this role play, it's, except it doesn't involve a moving screen like the games we're used to. Uh, so the GM 
they, they can use like images and effects to immerse the players in the narrative. But at the end of the day, the tabletop role playing is mainly based on the theater of the mind. So the GM narrates and describes the scene and you put it together in your mind. Um, the main reason I mentioned Dungeons and Dragons is because it's the most known RPG system, but there are many others such as Pathfinder, Starfinder, Star Trek, Traveler, Cyberpunk, etc. Some are medieval fantasies, others are set in dystopian futures, others are set in space, and others have you as a normal human being fighting cosmic creatures. So basically, RPGs, there's R RPGs for all tastes. Wow. Yeah, that's insane. That's awesome. I can see that. Uh, I know there's a couple others that do it. Um, that play D and D, so I'd definitely check those out if you're if you're interested. Hit up uh, Saren Garcia. Sounds like he'd be uh, all over that for Saren. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, what advice do you have for your fellow soldiers here uh, that may be either new to the Arma or wanting to enlist with us? What what advice do you got? Of course, Major. First, I have a message for the soldiers in the unit, and then I will also talk with the new players after it. So for the soldiers here in the unit, I would say, and I'll be very brief, dedicate yourself to something you enjoy doing in the unit. There's so many things we, you can do in the unit. There's so many uh, staff shops, so many MOSs. Do what you like to do. Uh, if you want to rise through the ranks, be the best what you do. And even if you're not the best at the moment, show that you want to be the best, or at least be interested in what you're doing. You know, ask questions, get involved, show service, right? Um, and... Now, for the new armor troop players that want to enlist, what I can say is that if you're looking for an organized realism unit that follows all the procedures and protocols of the real army, of course, as far as possible, we can simulate everything to the letter. Uh, but if you like, you know, most procedures and protocols and all the milsim, all the tactical realism, etc., you like being in a group, you like to achieve goals together, you like to be in an active community that is always creating new friendships, that not that meets not only to play Arma Tree, but also other games, your place is here. So yeah, I hope to see you uh, soon on our one station in training uh, with our cadre and to be, become a full member of our, of our unit. Outstanding. Any siblings? Actually, no, Major. I'm my only child. Um, You're so lucky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so then uh, with no siblings, I mean, how do you uh, pick, you know, what's your biggest pet peeve? I mean, pet peeves, yeah. There's so many pet peeves, of course, uh, we have. But I'm going to talk about something here about real life, actually not in the unit. Um, I will name one. So basically, I like I don't like going to restaurants that much. Generally, I deliver food or eat at home because when I'm eating, generally, I don't like being interrupted all the time. So this doesn't apply to the people who are at the table with me because we are t talking to each other. I don't bother with that. But in fact, this applies to waiters because here in Brazil, waiters are, depending on the restaurant, are constantly watching what you're doing to either, either offer more food or take your dish off the table. They kind of want you to go away as fast as possible so you free the, the table to someone else so that is really a pet peeve of mine you know i like to go out i like to eat with, with other people talk with them but there are some restaurants that just want you get out of there as fast as possible and i don't want want to like you know eat fast i want to yeah, that would like, be annoying. Slowly, yeah and talk with the person i'm with me there so yeah yeah i i agree i mean yeah that's Boy, remind remind me about that when I come to Brazil. <laughs> Any, yeah. uh, what kind of guilty pleasures do you have? Well, it's uh, related to food. I mean, I could have <laughs> mentioned this as my favorite food, but I decided to leave it here for the, for the guilty pleasure section. Uh, I didn't mention it there, but I really like sweets. Um, everything that involves chocolate, ice cream, cakes, cookies, whatever. Um, I generally eat a lot of it. Not at the point of doing it every day, but when there's, there's like a birthday or some other party, I end up exaggerating a little bit. So as everyone knows, too much sweets can be bad for your health. So I, I consider this to be a guilty pleasure. Gotcha. Nice. Um, so what's something you can't live without? Maybe that's sweets. <laughs> yeah, that's that actually could be one. Uh, <laughs> but I, th I think most people would answer this as well. I don't know if... Previous uh, men behind the ranks uh, answered this. This is the, the way I would do it. But the internet, right? Yeah. So the internet makes our lives so much easier that I basically can't quite imagine what life would be without it. So 
Having been born in 1998, I still dealt with the, the end of the dial-up internet, and I kind of lived a child childhood without the internet as we know it. So I can even imagine what it would be like. But I believe that the way we have adapted to the digital world, I, I think it would be difficult to return to a world without it. So imagine, without the internet, we wouldn't even be here with you know recording this podcast. Yeah, that's 100% yeah. true. Um, what's on what's on that bucket list of yours? What are you hoping to check off? This is something, it's a bit of a cliche, really. I think most people would also uh, reply like this, but travel the world. I've never had the opportunity to travel even to a neighboring country, uh, mainly due to the fin financial aspect. So first, I would plan to be a successful worker in my company, you know, earn a higher wage and be able to visit other continents, and especially countries that have snow. I always wanted to see what snow is like in person. Oh, boy, I, I can take a picture out my window. We got a, we got a <laughs> yeah. bit of it. Probably more up in Canada, huh, Starling? Oh, yeah, you come up here to Canada, the Great White North, first sergeant, I'll give you a tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll mail you some next time. All right. All right, see if it makes it. What's your favorite movie? Um, for a movie, um, I have, like, not only movie, but also I think from TV shows, it would be Band of Brothers. Of Most people in the oh, yeah. say same thing. But it's a TV series, right? Not a movie. Uh, I think for a movie, I would say uh, it, it is Interstellar. Um, it's a film that shows how small we are in this universe. And the way that the film shows the progression of time, relativity, time travel, and the consequences of messing with all of this, I think that the soundtrack also helps a lot, uh, makes this film wonderful. And I've rewatched it multiple times. Wow, nice. I, I'll be honest, I've never watched it. I've seen it. It, it has Matthew McConaughey in it, right? Um, yeah. I, yeah, I'll add that to my list. Um, so a couple last questions here. What's an embarrassing story or maybe a funny moment uh, that's happened to you in the unit or real life? Yeah, most people generally talk about something in the unit, but uh, I'm going to talk about something in real life. You know, spice things up a little bit. Um, so basically, when I was in the army seven years ago, when I'm, you know, here in Brazil, we have the mandatory service. So as soon as we have, like, we are 17, 18 years old, we are, uh, it's mandatory to enlist. And I was chose chosen to be there for one year. Um, basically, we were heading to the boot camp location. And we were inside a transport truck with multiple other soldiers heading there. We were equipped with a very heavy backpack on our back with all the stuff we needed for the boot, boot camp and also the rifle in our hands, fully equipped. Uh, when disembarking, like when dismounting the truck, I didn't use one of the ladders on the side of the truck and instead decided to jump directly, directly onto the ground. And my thought process was basically that when I reached the ground, I would try to bend my knees to absorb the impact. The height wasn't too much, maybe one and a half or two meters, which is like six foot, uh, uh, you know, uh, the height there was six foot. So if I if I had just been wearing clothes without a backpack and rifle, just like civilian clothes, I would probably be, have been able to do this without much problems. But I was fully equipped, like I described. I had a, you know, a maybe five, 10 uh, kilos backpack plus a four or five kilos rifle in my hand. So as soon as I hit the ground, I did what I planned to do. I bent my knees, right? To make, uh, I kind of observe the impact. But the weight was so much that I kind of ended up <laughs> bending forward and I had to jump one one leg several times to balance myself, almost falling, falling to the ground in the process. I still don't know how to, to this day how I managed to not fall completely with my belly facing the ground. Uh, <laughs> why is this embarrassing, you may think? Well, there were several other trucks full of troops who saw what happened. I was lucky because most of them were still dismounting, so they had their backs towards me. Uh, but few saw what happened. Uh, but even so, even if little people, all, you know, small amount of people saw it, for a corporal to be that I was, uh, it was a bit shameful. So, but hopefully, you know, fortunately my performance at the boot camp was, was okay. And uh, so kind of, you know, soldiers kind of forgot what happened there. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can imagine that. Uh that scenario playing out. That's funny. I've seen it happen as well. <laughs> uh, so uh, last question I have for you, what is your most proudest achievement uh, that you've undertaken or and succeeded in uh, today or of to date? Well, um, I'm almost, almost graduating college, but I'm not going to talk about that. Um, it's actually in the army as well. So here we have 
what we what is called corporal training course. That's like the literal translation, but it could be translated to WLC or BLC in the uh, U.S. Army. Um, it is a very demanding and much more complicated than the basic boot camp that I went through first. I could compare how this course works with our ranger school here at the unit, but the course lasts several days, and not only physical tests are involved, but also written tests. Not only did I manage to pass the course, but I also left the army with a merit certificate. Basically, this certificate means saying that you were one of the best soldiers in the company uh, during the year of instruction. Of course, I was not the one, only one. There was like 20, 10 others, but it's still a very uh, nice certificate to have. And especially for the work market, if you have one of those, people hire you very fast. Outstanding. Well, congrats on that. Yeah, I would say that definitely translates uh, to your experience here in the 3rd Division Realism Unit. Um, as being, you know, soldier of the quarter, um, you know, moving up to the way you have into your first sergeant role now um, of, you know, uh, basically tack on that certificate to say third ID as well. I mean, you do outstanding and really appreciate your service with us thus far. As I said, um, I remember getting to ship your three year anniversary to you um, and, you know, celebrating that not too long ago. Uh, look forward to seeing you uh, thrive. You know, your plate is very full now. I mean, you went from you know, a, a platoon medic uh, to a readiness NCO uh, to a company readiness NCO and kind of now into that company first on role. And, um, you know, you, you got a very full plate between S3 and S2. Um, and I, I really look forward to seeing that growth um, of, of you and your leadership um, in 2024 here. So thank you for coming on in, uh, first time. Oh, well, Major, thank you. All right, so on to the last segment. We usually like to uh, spend a couple minutes here <clears throat> talking about uh, Arma 3 mods that we that we come across, and we'll post these down below so you guys uh, listening can all uh, take a look at them. But uh, we each kind of come uh, to this podcast with a mod that we that we like or uh, that kind of caught our eye. Uh, so I guess first, since you're fresh in our mind, uh, why don't you go ahead? What what's your mod, and tell us a little bit about it. Roger that, Major. Well, the mod that I found out was, it's very recent. It was published uh, in the 18th of January, so maybe uh, three, four days ago since we were recording this on the 21st. Uh, it's called the Task Force Scribbles or T Fire Scribbles. Basically, it's the purpose of the mod uh, is to allow players to track different radio frequencies. So, uh, all of you here that, you know, is are in a leadership position, you know that generally we have three, four, five frequencies uh, at the same time. So it adds a little note on the, in the, you know, below the radio attached to it, where you can actually, you know, write the frequencies uh, that you are using and what each frequency, you know, who is in which frequency. So this, you know, three zero is alpha company, three one is platoon leadership, six zero three cap, etc. So you can actually use that to remember um, which frequencies are you using and who is in which frequency. So I think this is a very good mod for, you know, any unit uh, that, you know, especially for the leaders that needs to be in five, six frequencies at the same time. I think I'm exaggerating a little bit, but some of us actually stay on at least four. So if you're a person that doesn't remember too much stuff and forget things easily, I think this mod is for you, you know, just take notes on your... Um, That's on very unique. Frequencies. That's very yeah. unique. Very nice. All right. Um, how about Corporal Starling? What what mod are you wanting to shine a little light on today? Yeah, so my mod isn't as uh, new as First Sergeant Garcia's. It's a mod from 2019. It's uh, Catlam's Notebook. It's one of the mods that kind of, uh, I should say, are from the same author as our uh, Cat Medical that we're testing in the unit currently. It's essentially a notebook for forward observers, for radio operators, etc. It just allows you to have uh, kind of allowing you to uh i don't know if any of you have used the notebook we currently have through ace but it's essentially an updated version of that where it actually has nine lines uh call for fires things like that uh pages dedicated to those so that you're able to more easily structure those and it's just something that i've used uh prior and feel like it could use some uh more light on it it's uh, definitely one of my favorite go-to mods for anything relating to forward observer or radio operator uh, operations kind of going hand in hand Outstanding. with uh, uh, First Sergeant Garcia's uh, mod for the frequency uh, sheets. Awesome. Um, and I can, uh, I guess I'll let Ricky go next and I'll, I'll end. Well, I have a mod, pretty recent, and it's really simple. 
It's Winter Tanoa. I decided to go with a map for this section, and I'm a real like winter maps. Okay. Tanoa is one of the base game maps, and this is just remake to make it winter elements. So yeah, looking over it, you know, uh, rain, basically any rain that was in the map before is now snowfall. That's pretty cool. Roads covered in snow. Um, definitely as um, a little uh, as we get into our uh, next campaign and, and what that looks like, um, you know, we, we like some snow coming up, hopefully. So um, the mod I want to talk about is Vicinity InfoShare. Uh, it's actually an AI tool, so it, it makes AI a little bit more competitive for us. Um, I, ideally, uh, when an enemy's uh, detected by the AI, so you know it might be us, um, or if you're uh, single playering it and you have some, uh, you know, blue four AI that you're controlling, uh, the group shares that hostile information to nearby friendly units automatically. You know, you don't have to say go attack. Um, you know, if the group is uh, relocating or nearby groups, uh, will change accordingly to kind of, um, you know, swoop in and maybe flank. Um, so it's pretty dynamic. Um, and it's automatic, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, this, this mod has, uh, currently only 417 current subscribers. Um, and it's an 85, um, current favorites, uh, subscribers, uh, I guess lists. So, um, and it's brought by Legendwood. So, um, yeah, I, I look forward to being able to play around with that. And, um, so far reviews are coming back, you know, it's fairly, fairly new in January here. So. Um, I'm assuming some alpha testing uh, going on, but um, yeah, if, if you want to check out these um, mods, they'll be down in the description below. Um, but without further ado, um, again, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for coming in. Uh, I do want to say one last thing. I noticed uh, with uh, Starling uh, mentioned cat. Um, we didn't mention this in our uh, unit news side, so I guess I'll mention it here and give a plug in for uh, Sergeant Nicholas and uh, what cat and, you know, we explained it a little bit, I think, last podcast. Um, if not, I know we explained it during a uh, um, unit debrief, but um, we have the rest of January and the rest of February uh, to really just test out cat medical that we're working on right now. Um, end of February, uh, we will be putting it to a unit vote um, and being able to then decide if we want to stay with cat medical um, and or go back to ace medical. Um, so with that, if the vote for uh, is a no and we stay with ace medical, we'll just swap the mod packs in and, you know, combat lifesaver and 68 whiskey. Um, obviously we'll go through their rewrite, but not, um, I guess, control wise have to change. Um, but then if it's a vote, yes, and we stay with cat medical, then this gives us a couple months, um, to revamp those courses with cat medical knowledge, um, and, you know, potentially make it a little bit more in, uh, uh difficult, uh, within our F, uh, S3 operation or S3, uh, uh, fig. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there before we close up shop here. Um, any closing words from anybody? Thank you for uh, inviting me here, Major and Soren Smirky. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be part of this podcast and also be part of the unit. So, well, thank you. Well, yeah, I agree with uh, First Sergeant Garcia. Thank you for the invite. It's been a pleasure to be here and hope to see you guys in the field operating in a few hours here. Outstanding. Gentlemen, thank you. I would like to thank you both for coming. It was nice that you came here, even though you were needed for it. And well, all right, outstanding. Well, without further ado, um, thanks everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, we're going on a, a good amount of time here, so hopefully you made it through the whole thing. Um, but without further ado, um, rock of the mar. Carry on. Sky Square for actual question.